Let me read to you a passage from the 10th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 1 to 10. It's the Gospel selected by the Church for the fourth Sunday of Eastertide, which is the Sunday celebrated as the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. St. John writes in that passage, Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, these are the words of our Lord, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listens, listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That's from John chapter 10, verse 1 to 10. What does it suggest about the priesthood, which is what is celebrated on the World Day of Prayer for Vocations? Well, let me tell you the story of a Catholic priest. He was born Joseph de Voista. He was the seventh child and fourth son of the Flemish corn merchant, Joannes Franciscus de Voista, and his wife, Anne Catherine Vutes, in the village of Tremello in Flemish Brabant. He attended college at brain le comte and then entered the novitiate of the religious congregation of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary in Leuven, taking the name of Brother Damianus in his first vows, presumably after the first Saint Damien. During his ecclesiastical studies, he would pray every day before a picture of St. Francis Xavier, patron of missionaries, to be sent to the... His prayer was to be sent to the foreign missions. Three years later, his prayer was answered when, because of illness, his brother August could not travel to Hawaii as a missionary. So... Damien was allowed to take his place. On March the 19th, 1864, Damien landed at Honolulu Harbour at Oahu as a missionary. There he was ordained into the priesthood on May the 21st, 1864, at the Cathedral of Our Lady of Peace. In 1865, he was assigned to the Catholic mission in North Kohala, on the island of Hawaii. At this time, the Kingdom of Hawaii was facing a public health crisis. Some native Hawaiians became infected by several diseases brought to the Hawaiian islands by foreign traders and sailors. Thousands of Hawaiians died of influenza, syphilis, and other ailments that had never been seen there before. One disease present there was leprosy which at that time was thought to be highly contagious and incurable. In 1865, out of fear of its spread, the Hawaiian legislature passed and the king approved what was called the Act to Prevent the Spread of Leprosy. This law quarantined the lepers of Hawaii and caused them to be moved to Kalawau on the island of Molokai. About 8,000 Hawaiians were sent to the peninsula from 1866 
through to 1869. The Royal Board of Health provided the quarantined people with food and other supplies, but it did not have the resources to offer proper health care for them. By 1868, drunken and lewd conduct prevailed among them, and the easy-going, good-natured people seemed wholly changed. Father Damien was the first priest to volunteer, and on May the 10th, 1873, he arrived with 816 lepers living there. His role was not limited to being a religious priest. He dressed ulcers, he built a reservoir, he built homes and furniture, he made coffins, and he dug graves. First and foremost, of course, he ministered as a Catholic priest. Six months after his arrival at Kalawahu, he wrote to his brother Panfil in Europe. This is what he wrote. I make myself a leper with the lepers to gain all to Jesus Christ. Father Damien's arrival was a turning point for the community. Under his leadership, basic laws were enforced, shacks became painted houses, working farms were organized, and schools were established. He died of leprosy on the April, on April the 15th, 1889, at the age of 49. In 1977, Pope Paul VI declared Father Damien to be venerable. That's a declaration by the Church as a result of the Church's rigorous examination of his heroic virtues. And then on June the 4th, 1995, Pope John Paul II beatified him. <coughs> and then on October the 11th, 2009, he was canonized by Pope Benedict the 16th. Mahatma Gandhi once claimed Damien to have been an inspiration for his social campaigns in India that led to the freedom of his people. Both during his own lifetime and since, despite some controversy, he was hailed for his dedication to the material well-being of a population of miserable outcasts. But the fundamental significance of his life has all too often been completely overlooked. He was a priest. He was there precisely as a Catholic priest, whose purpose was to bring the lepers into union with Jesus Christ and so gain for them a place in heaven. He was there precisely as another Christ, and he knew that as an ordained Catholic priest, he was one who is in Jesus Christ the High Priest, and thus made Jesus Christ present there. The Catholic Church teaches that when a man is ordained to the ministerial priesthood, by the sacrament of holy orders, he acts, the Latin term is, in persona Christi capitis, that is, in the person of Christ, who is the head of his body, the Church. Through his celebration of the Holy Eucharist, for instance, he makes present the one eternal sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Because Father Damien de Voister was there on Molokai, Jesus Christ was there in an altogether special way. This was the signal benefit Damien brought to that store, that sorry section of the island, and all the other benefits he brought are to be seen in that context. This is the glory of the priesthood, and the source of its usefulness to the world. This is why we ought to pray for an increase invocations to the priesthood and to the religious life, represented, for instance, by St. Marianne Cope, the Holy Nun, who succeeded Father Damien on Molokai. In the Gospel for this, this Sunday that I read earlier, which we celebrate as the annual day for prayer for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, our Lord describes himself as the gate of the sheepfold, through whom any true shepherd must pass if the sheep he leads are to gain pasture. This reminds us that the ordained priest is consecrated to Christ and that it is Christ who operates in him and who is made present in his person and ministry. It is in order that Christ be made more and more present in the world and the church that we ought all pray for an abundance of vocations to the priesthood and also to the religious life. On this day, the Sunday celebrated 
for this intention and dedicated to this intention, let us resolve to do this in a regular and systematic fashion.